On July 19th, an announcement made by Sheila Malconson, BC Minister of Mental Health and Addiction, that young people in Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam and Port Moody soon have access to much needed support with the opening of the newest Foundry Centre in BC. Tri-City Community Television was there and brings you this report. Good morning. Wow, so great to see all of you in 3D. Um, I apologize for just being uh, a head over a very tall podium. Um, I didn't wear my heels today because I rode my bike and there's no riser, so I apologize for being on my tippy toes so you could see me. Um, good morning, and uh, I'm Selena Robinson. I'm the MLA for Coquitlam Millardville, and I am so... I'm so pleased to be here on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish peoples, and in particular the Kukwetlam First Nation. And to get us started off in a good way, I would like to invite Chief Ed Hall up on the, the stage, along with Ernie Cardinal, the Youth Services Manager for Spirit of the Children's Society. So Chief and, and Ernie, can you please um, come on up? In my language, that means hello, good friends. And that's how I feel today. I was asked to come to uh, help start off this day with the song. And that, to us, is good medicine, as Chief Ed has, has shared with me. And I'm very happy, because I was looking up there, and I thought, if two Muppets pop up, <laughs> 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 so, so this is starting off in a good way. So I'm going to do this song, which I find is just perfect for this. This is a charity song that was taught to me from Sheila Jack. And this is a water song, a morning song. And what I like about this is the reason why they would sing this song was when they were getting together to gather fresh water for the community. So everyone would gather the uh, people that cared for the people. So when I look at that, the foundry, I see all these water carriers right here, and we're all gathering together for the people. Good morning. Thank you very much for starting us off in a good way with that beautiful song, Ernie. I love it. Uh, thank you, Minister Robinson, for uh, being our MC and uh, carrying us through this event. And um, I want to acknowledge uh, the, the ministers that are here, Minister Robinson and Minister Malcolmson. And there's a, a mayor here, uh, Mayor Stewart, and uh, councillors. Uh, there they are up in the middle there. Yeah. Kim, <laughs> Towner, and Asmundson. Thank you. 
I just want to uh, say uh, it's, a, it's a really, really lovely day to, uh, to be here to gather for this. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, a day that uh, shows uh, all of our uh, perseverance uh, that we've uh, you know, had to embark on, uh, you know, going through a pandemic and whatnot. I acknowledge uh, Claire McLean of, uh, you know, she was advocating to get uh, a foundry uh, into the Tri-Cities a few years back. And uh, it's nice to see that it's uh, actually going to be coming into fruition, uh, you know, pretty soon, I guess. And, um, yes. Uh, I'll give you a, you know, a little bit of my endangered hunk of as I usually do, and I uh, acknowledge all of you here, and uh, everybody that's uh, waiting for us uh, when we have to return home, you know, at the end of this uh, working day. I swear, yes, I boy, all, see, I'm scalpelum, and hall, tonus, tweak, tweaks, and lock, tweak, hook, clum, e, mission, e, scallops. Also, I'm to see it's eaten off and e machin at an army set, caught wheelum e a tonish, quiquaclum tomoff. Good day, how are you all? Ed Hall is my English given name. I'm the elected chief of the Quiquaclum people. Quiquaclum is a traditional territory here that I welcome you all on. Honored friends, relatives, and visitors welcome the ancestral unceded lands of the Quiquaclum people, shared by many in the past, present, and going into the future. I would acknowledge uh, this uh, thing that we've been uh, going to uh, try and get through to, to today. You know, it's been a, about a three-year journey, and I was at meetings. I met Claire McLean uh, back in the time there. We were at a Coquitlam library, and that's where I met a good friend and brother, uh, another mother, Ernie Cardinal. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, you know there was a, a really really good uh, a round of uh, meeting people there, and uh, and. Uh, then the pandemic struck and we we're also trying to find space for this. I was wishing at the time that I could have uh, somehow helped, but uh, you know, I just stuck with it and uh, just uh, you know, supported them all the way that I could. And, and likewise, it's been coming around too. So we're getting support into our community. I acknowledge all of the, the good work that they, that they do and, uh, and you know, the services that they bring to uh, the youths and the mental health and wellness journeys and addictions and whatnot. Uh, there are different ways uh, that people could seek out the help for that. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to know that uh, just from my own research of it. Uh, not only is it in-person meeting, but you could have virtual you have phone call chats, online chats, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, I just want to uh, you know, make sure that I acknowledge all of that and uh, what the ministry departments do to uh, help uh, you know help us uh, help our communities. Uh, you know make uh, you know, good uh, you know, thriving citizens. Uh, you know going forward, uh, it's a really really uh, growing population in the region here and uh, the services are definitely going to be getting strained uh, the more thousands of people that we take into the uh, within the city's boundaries and uh, to have uh, you know, the, the government ministries uh, you know, helping out to, to be able to uh, you know, help deliver more services and create them uh, in our area here it's uh, it's only going to be a, you know, a good thing going forward uh, but I just want to acknowledge all of that Mr. Robinson and Mr. Malkinson and everybody else that's involved uh, in your respective uh, places of work. Uh, I think that's, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I just want to uh, you know, thank you all very much for being here, for taking the, this part of your day and uh, come down here and uh, you know, be a part of this uh, really, really important and exciting announcement. I, 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 thank you. I stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Hall. And I know I want to note that uh, the chief is joined by two of his counselors, John Peters and uh, George Chappie, have, have joined us. So, so welcome. Um, and again, thank you um, both Ernie and Andrew for joining us. Very nice in such a good way. I want to just take a moment to say how how Chief Hull's language skills have grown immeasurably over these last number of years, and I think um, I think he should be very proud of his hard studies and how they've paid off and helped us to understand the peoples who have been here since time immemorial. So thank you so much, yeah. both of you. My list keeps growing of all the fabulous uh, leadership we have in this community. And so I'm going to read out who's here in the room. And if I miss somebody, please let me know uh, because I've been, um, been making notes. 
Uh, so we are joined here today, uh, my colleague and fabulous friend, Sheila Malkinson, the BC's Minister of Mental Health and Addictions. I'm so thrilled that she's here in our hood. She um, hails from uh, the fabulous communities of uh, Gabriel Island and, and Nanaimo, and so having her here um, in the fabulous uh, city of Coquitlam is a real treat for all of us. So thank you for joining us. We also have Karen T, Associate Executive Director of Foundry, and Claire McLean, Chief Executive Officer of Share Family and Community Services. So please, Woo! round of applause. For I do bring regrets from Finn Donnelly, Rick Lumack, and Mike Farnworth. I call them the boys that I work with here in the tri cities um, And there's a number of very special guests who have joined us here today. Um, from uh, the city of Coquitlam, we have Mayor Richard Stewart, we have Brent Asmundson, Chris Wilson, Terry Towner, I, I, and Steve Kim. Did see Steve come in. From uh, uh, Port Coquitlam, we have Glenn Pollock and Nancy McCurra. I think I saw you, Nancy. Thank you for coming. Um, from um, Belcara, we have Mayor Jamie Ross joining us. I saw Jamie. Um, from uh, Anmore, the metropolis of Anmore, Councillor Polly Creers joined us. I saw you sneak in, Polly. Thanks for being here. From School District uh, 43, we have, uh, I saw Michael Thomas, uh, Christine Pollock, Jennifer Blatherwick, and Carrie Palmer Isaac, I think I saw from, uh, yes, there you are, welcome. We also have um, Patricia Gartland, superintendent has joined us, and uh, Rosie Manhouse, who is just starting as the DPAC 43 chair, is here, and I just wanted to give her a warm welcome. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, as the MLA uh, for uh, Coquitlam Lark, uh, Mayor Bagramoff. Um, Mayor, oh, Mayor. Mayor Bagramoff. Nice to see you here from, from Port Moody. Welcome. Mm -hmm. As the, as the MLA uh, for Coquitlam, Millardville, and as a former city councillor, um, and as a um, family therapist in this region and, and counselor and addictions counselor for a very long time, someone who's worked for SHARE forever. Um, it's really very exciting to be here. And so I am so thrilled, so thrilled to invite our, our first speaker, Minister Sheila Malkinson, to tell us more about why we're all here. Minister Malkinson. Thank you, Minister Robinson, Selena. I'm so honored to be here with you and your community. I'm, I'm grateful to the to be on the lands of Coast Salish people, and in particular, the Quiquetlam First Nation. Uh, thank you, Chief Hall. It's good to see you again. We were, um, I get to, I'm the great honor of being at the celebrations of some expanded services for mental health and addictions. And, and Chief Paul and I stood together along with Minister Robinson and other colleagues, including Minister Farnworth, to open the Redfish Healing Centre on Quiquitlam lands, uh, the Samiguala, um, which we used to call Riverview lands. So um, um, I'm, I'm glad to be with you. It's a good sign that we are still standing together have more good news to share. And uh, thank you, Ernie Cardinal, both for blessing the space and, and, and for your beautiful opening song. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and thank you to everybody in the room. Uh, that you are here is because you are part of a movement to add more services and more supports for young people in your region. Um, we, our government recognizes that you are people who step up for community and that's why we get to be here. Um, we're here today because Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, Port Moody, Belcara, and more have shown, have demonstrated their commitment to serving community and your willingness to do more great things for community. By coming to the table, you found a willing partner with our government. Um, we know that your commitment and your connections and your determination um, have got us to this place today, and it really is a day of celebration. Oh. And so, I am here in Coquitlam to announce that you will be the next host of a Foundry Centre for Youth in your region. I, 
I recognize the, the advocacy and encouragement as well as all these people in the room of my colleagues, Minister Rob, Ministers Robinson and Farnworth and MLA, Dan Donnelly and Rick Lumack. Uh, you have got very strong advocates, uh, both for the deep need for more services in your region across British Columbia, but especially the way that I've heard and the foundry leads have heard um, that you have fantastic community organizations who already have a proven track record of working together and that cross municipality, cross school district, cross NGO sector, um, and with a very strong First Nations partnership. Mm. It's, give yourselves a pat on the back. This is what got you to this day. So Foundry Tri-Cities will be a real beacon for young people in this region. At Foundry, youth between 12 and 24 and their families can get free, confidential, age-friendly supports. They're designed for and by youth. These are supports like mental health and substance use services and counseling, primary and sexual health care, youth and family care support, a really important element of what Foundry does and what makes it stand out and makes our government so honored and, and so proud to be behind this Foundry movement. When a young person makes the courageous decision to reach out for help, there will be services here in Tri-Cities that meet their needs and meet them where they are. Here, youth can find a real sense of community, a sense of belonging, and that is especially important right now. I felt that really strongly when we opened the Comox Foundry, which is the one of the newest, the newest uh, in British Columbia. Uh, when we opened up just to hear and sense the connection and community in the room and to have the um, young validators speaking at our opening ceremony was extremely moving. I'll never forget how it is that they described how Foundry brings people together, uh, gives them that sense of belonging and connects them with the support that they need and that they deserve. I'm very grateful to the dedication and work of all the partners here in the room over the last three years. Um, and that has brought us to this moment and we recognize now that there is um, a lot of work over the months to come as well. It takes community to make Foundry work. Mm -hmm. When Premier John Horgan created my ministry, the first of its kind in Canada, he did so to build a comprehensive and a seamless continuum of mental health and substance use care for everyone. And we are working hard every day to do exactly that, building integrated mental health and substance use care for children, youth, and young adults. As, a, for example, expanding the early years mental health supports for children under the age of six, funding early psychosis intervention, expanding funding for eating disorder prevention and counseling, doubling youth substance use beds across the province, and also investing to expand the Foundry family. In addition to the 12 Foundry centers that are open already, this afternoon, we are going to formally open Foundry Langley, which is going to be fantastic. There are also seven in development, Burns Lake, Cranbrook, Port Hardy, Squamish, Surrey, Williams Lake, and Fort St. John. Wow. And with today's announcement, Foundry Tri-Cities. That makes 21 across the province, and there's more to come. Youth can also use Foundry Virtual, and I really encourage you to spread that out to your networks. It'll start to show who in the region isn't yet connected with care and can be. And you can get, a, a, you look for Foundry BC um, in your app um, <coughs> search, um, and, and it's available to anybody anywhere in the province. And for those youth who don't have a device or don't have access to internet, there's also phone access to counseling and all the services that a physical Foundry Center can provide. Foundry Centers are absolutely essential, so we can catch small problems before they become big ones. If we address big problems before they cause irrevocable damage, then we can make a tremendous lifelong difference in the lives of British Columbians. Foundry will be life-changing for many people here, right in your community. It'll help them get the help they need, when they need it, and in their own communities. So congratulations, Tri-Cities Foundry. Thank you so much for stepping up to provide this life-saving and essential service. I wish you the best with the work in the months ahead, and I really look forward to uh, 
cutting the cake and celebrating with you when you open the Physical Foundry Center for Young People in Tri-Cities. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs> is as fine as concern. I know what's coming, but I have to tell you, there's nothing like hearing the words um, in my community. So really, thank you very much, Sheila, for this. Um, it means that young people in our communities will get the mental health and substance use supports that they need and deserve right here, right here in, in the Tri-Cities. And, um, and it, for me, uh, I think back to the time when I was an addictions counselor at Odyssey and Burnaby in 19... 89, I think I started, um, and to see where we have come and where we are going really speaks volumes, and I am so proud to be part of a government that gets in investing upriver and making sure that our children are cared for uh, and that there, our arms, our collective arms, are wrapped around them, so, so thank you again. Um, and I, again, I want to thank you, Minister, for your continued dedication in focusing on young people and making sure that they have the ongoing supports that they need, not just to survive, but to thrive. So now I'd like to invite Karen T, Associate Executive Director of Foundry, to join us at the podium. Good morning, everyone. This is amazing to see all of you here live in person. This is wonderful. I'm Karen T, I'm the Associate Executive Director at Foundry and I support service implementation and innovation. Um, I'm a clinical psychologist and a long time advocate of upstream learning intervention services for, for youth. Um, really, um, at Foundry, at our, sorry, I'm just gonna have to look at my notes here and peer over my glasses at you. Um, at Foundry, our provincial work extends across lands that are home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. And as a racialized settler, I'm really grateful to be here today um, joining all of you on the unceded and occupied territories of the Coast Salish folks, in particular the Kwikwetlem First Nations. We are so excited to welcome Tri-Cities to our growing network of Foundry Centres. Um, this announcement advances our shared vision <clears throat> to transform youth mental health and substance use in BC. Prior to Foundry, um, I had worked in the Fraser region for about 20 years, both in Fraser Health and in the Ministry of uh, Children and Family Development's Child and Youth Mental Health. So I'm one of my peeps. I've been around for a while. And I used to hang out next door over at the Youth Day Treatment Center. So I'm so happy to be here. In, in addition to establishing the early psychosis program and um, growing the uh, portfolio for child, youth, and young adult services in Fraser Health, um, uh, sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm just a bit nervous here. Um, so it, I, I, uh, I had established the early psychosis program in the Fraser's and then also developed a portfolio for child youth and young adult mental health services. And what we know very well here is that the Fraser region is the largest and fastest growing population of young people in BC. And there was and remains a great need to further develop and coordinate services for youth. And I know there's a lot of funding coming this way to the Fraser's, particularly with early psychosis which I'm very, very excited about. There's always the pressure for acute care services, we know that, uh, but it's easily accessible, community-based services that young people can access early that we need more and more of. So I left Fraser Health to co-establish Foundry, and I'm absolutely delighted to see Foundry Centres continue to grow across the province with the fifth Foundry Centre in the Fraser region here in Tri-Cities. It's five. Five here. <laughs> How many more can we have? We're not So what can we be looking at for the Fraser region? <laughs> One in each community, wouldn't that be exciting? So for me, this means more service providers working together for youth and their families, counselors, physicians, youth and family peer support workers, employment workers, nurses, all working together, caring together and knowing that they're not alone. That's the big piece of the work that we do here because we are an integrated youth service. So they're working together. And it also means organizations breaking through real and perceived barriers to be able to partner together and care in their community. This also means youth finding their space, finding the right service when they need it, finding each other, and also opportunities. 
So it's something we don't often talk about. We talk about the services, but there's also what we offer youth in a different way. Some time ago, in my previous work, I had met with a group of youth um, who really wanted to give back because they were so grateful for the care they received. And what was really important to them was that they have a variety of options for giving back while also developing their skills, themselves, their skills, and their passions. And I've carried this with me over the years. And so working together alongside youth here in Foundry, we offer those opportunities. Co-designing safe space, which we're gonna get into soon, working as peer supporters, giving voice through social media platforms, or making connections and participating as a network of youth across the province. And this also means that youth uh, trust Foundry enough so that when they go on vacation, and it is summer holidays right now, you're gonna see this happening, they visit, and they visit another part of the province, they'll feel comfortable dropping into another Foundry if they need to talk to somebody. So it speaks to the community that we create here at Foundry where everyone is welcome. This also speaks to the importance of Foundry's integrated services, which makes it possible to access all five core services in one location. We have mental health and substance use supports, physical and sexual health care, youth and family peer support, and social services such as employment services or income assistance or housing. And all of this is provided both in person and then also virtually through our Foundry app, which Minister Malkinson mentioned earlier. And uh, today, we now have 12 centres, one more opening, with seven more currently being developed, which Minister Malcolmson has already listed off, which is so exciting. <laughs> and we could not have achieved any of this without the continued support of our donors, community agencies and partners, including Providence Healthcare, the health authorities like Fraser Health, and government agencies like MCFD, MSDPR, uh, who continue to make our work possible. And one of the most important decisions we can make with the opening of a Foundry Centre is determining the lead agency, a non-profit organisation that's responsible for leading the work to establish a centre within a community. And this is why we are so proud to work with SHARE Family and Community Services to create a Foundry Centre here in Tri-Cities. We're grateful and excited to be working alongside a lead agency that's as passionate about the work we do. And we're thrilled to welcome Foundry uh, Foundry Tri-Cities to our Foundry Network, to our Foundry Family, as we do tend to call it. And as we look ahead, this announcement is one of many centres that we'll be working with over the next few years to continue expanding our services and provide access for young people across BC to receive health and wellness supports to meet them where they're at. So congratulations to Tri-Cities, Port Moody, Coquitlam, oh, Port Coquitlam, Belcara, and more. Congratulations Woo! to all of you. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, and so the next person I'm going to introduce probably does not need an introduction, uh, but I'm going to give her one anyway, uh, because I've been around Share longer than she has. <laughs> and, and, and I have the microphone, and I'm going to see it again. Um, but I, 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 I'm so thrilled, and I, think, I can't think of a more appropriate lead agency than Share. It is the, the glue, I think, in so many ways that that binds us all together, um, and I've worked for the organization since 1990 in some way, shape, or form, and to know that they were selected, I mean, I knew that they would be selected because they're so fabulous, but the leadership <laughs> that, that, that Claire has, has stewarded over these last few years has been outstanding, uh, because the, and the message has been consistent from the time that I was there in 1990, which is everyone can receive and everyone can offer. Everyone has the capacity. And this is how we, as a community, wrap our arms around each other so that we can all achieve our potential. It's been the message of SHARE since I started so many moons ago, um, and it continues to be that way. And I'm so thrilled that Claire is at the helm of leading us through this next iteration of SHARE, which includes a foundry. So Claire, please join us. Woo! Um, thank you so much. Um, I am I'm so delighted to be here today and to be here on the traditional and ancestral and unceded territory of the Coquitlam First Nation and our Coast Salish peoples. Um, I'm thrilled to see so much of our community's leadership here 
and Fraser Health Authority and the Ministry of Child and Family Development and our amazing nonprofit partners. We've got folks here from PLEA, we've got folks here from Phoenix Society, from the Locks Home, uh, from Access Youth, from Spirit of the Children Society, just amazing partners um, that have really helped us all get here today. So. Um, just as I, as I was thinking about today, knowing that I'd probably get nervous and emotional, I, I was reflecting about what a 12-year-old Claire would think of all this, the, a centre coming that could potentially help someone like her. And I'm pretty sure that a 12-year-old Claire would think a 44-year-old Claire is aged. Um, <laughs> and maybe she'd have a point, you know? When I look at the youth that Cher and, and our colleagues serve today, so much of what they talk about resonates with me uh, but at the same time, so much of it is incredibly different. When I was 12, 14 years old, alcohol was very prevalent among myself and my peers, but drugs were, were largely non-existent in my community. It was extremely hard to come by, and at the very most, it was mostly pot. There was certainly nothing so toxic that it could kill you the very first time you used it without any prior warning or indication. And the reality of today that youth face, that over six people every single day are drying, dying of drug toxicity, killing our young people, killing people that they love, and leaving behind young sons and daughters and nieces and nephews, that would have been unfathomable to me as a kid. When I was 14 years old, sadly, I already did know about the dangers of men. We girls knew what teachers not to be left alone in detention with. And when we had friends lose their weekends and a lot more when somebody slipped something in their drink at a party. But there wasn't social media yet. There was no smartphones. That possibility that an intimate, private photo could be shared with the world and used to shame and exploit and bully us, it simply didn't exist. When I was 14, the dialogue around gender identity and sexual preferences was practically non-existent. Same-sex marriage was still against the law, and it was simply unsafe to be yourself. And today's youth live in a country of legal same-sex marriage, and where a far more diverse range of sexual and gender norms and labels are visible and accepted. And while there is so much more work to be done, it is often today's youth who are leading those necessary changes, which is amazing. At 14, I remember listening to the news and hearing about Nelson Mandela being freed and the end of apartheid, reading newspaper articles about the impending disaster of the hole in the ozone layer, and to be honest, it all felt really far away. And today, our youth bravely confront the realities of systemic racism in our own community on a very regular basis. They are bombarded with examples of the ongoing inequalities and injustice that Indigenous and Black and other people of color experience. And these aren't stories from far away. The discovery of thousands of murdered and neglected children here in Canada, Indigenous children here in Canada, live footage of George Floyd's assault, and countless others are images that bombard our youth on a daily basis. And in the same way, climate change is no longer a theoretical exercise for our youth like it might have been when I was a kid. They are actively struggling to cope with the impacts of heat domes and wildfires and so much more. And so as much as a 14-year-old Claire may view the me here today as quite ancient, when I stand here and look at the realities facing our Tri-Cities youth, I actually feel like that 14-year-old Claire might be equally far away. And so as I look ahead to the work that we will all do together to bring a foundry to the Tri-Cities, I think perhaps the trick is to honor both versions of ourselves, to take the passion and the wisdom and the interests of our youth and combine them with the experience and the knowledge of our institutions and us, us as adults because the magic of this Foundry model is that it does things differently. At its core, Foundry recognizes that we are stronger together than we are apart. And through Foundry, we are seeing unprecedented collaboration between government and health authorities and nonprofit organizations and indigenous nations and organizations working together with a common focus and a common goal. We see doctors and counselors and youth peers sharing space and ideas with respect we see an honoring of different cultures and backgrounds and strengths and experiences and a curiosity of spirit that's embedded into every aspect of these foundry hubs. So on behalf of Share Society, we are deeply humbled and grateful by all of you here today and to be a part of this amazing process and by all of the work that you've all put in to get us here. And we look forward to working alongside all of you in the days and months to come 
to create something that our 14-year-old selves, our 44-year-old selves, and our 94-year-old selves can be very proud of. So thank you all. Thank you, Claire, and thank you for taking us all back to our 14-year-old selves. <laughs> a little awkward there, but, but it's a good reflection, I think, for all of us. I want to thank um, all of our speakers today, Minister Malcolmson, Karen, Claire, for being here. I want to thank again Ernie and Chief Hall for uh, the welcome. And, um, and thank you all for being part of such a fabulous community, building up a fa fabric for our young people. Uh, because we know that that's what we need to be doing is wrapping our arms around them collectively. Thank you all and uh, we've got some a lot more work to do and I look forward to joining you all in that work. Have a great day. <laughs>